All right, so now I'd like to welcome up Dr. Doherty and Ms. Melissa Estrella, who will be giving our special education budget presentation. Good evening. Um, so before I start, I really just want to thank um, our faculty and staff and our principals throughout this entire pandemic. Um, our priority has really been to meet the needs of our special education students um, to the best of our ability to make sure we had them in as much as we could, um, making sure that their health and safety was, was certainly put first. And very often with students with disabilities, you don't always see their, their health risks, um, but they are present. Uh, we have diabetics in our school. We have students with multiple disabilities, and we all really came together from the very beginning um, and decided um, to, to really prioritize our students with disabilities and making sure they were in as much as possible and, and doing whatever we could um, to meet their needs. So I just want to thank them. Um, I'm going to share the presentation with uh, Ms. Melissa Estrella. And she, um, she's the CSC chairperson. For those of you do, that don't know what that is, that's a committee on special education chairperson. Uh, so she really runs committee meetings uh, for determining whether students have disabilities, um, and then if so, what services they need. So please welcome her. Thank you. So let's take a look at our current programming right now that we offer in Putnam Valley. So we do follow the continuum of special education services to support our students within the least restrictive environment. So what that means is taking a look at general education classrooms. For instance, students that do require supports within special education, they might receive combined supports of related services, integrated co-teaching classes, and or special classes, which is smaller ratio of students to teacher. We also offer integrated co-teaching classes, grades K through high school, and that's where we provide, within the general education classroom, a general education teacher and a special education teacher to support our students. And finally, our special classes. That's our smaller classes, um, smaller ratios. Our students all receive the supports of special education services. <clears throat> We, they are highly designed for our students to meet their um, individualized needs and to provide the specially designed instruction. So one of the things that we have noticed over the years is um, our students that need a smaller class placement, that's a ratio of eight students, one teacher, and one assistant in there, have increased. So. Right now, um, what's going to drive, this is gonna really, th this slide will be, um, come up later in my presentation when I look at staffing. So our incoming kindergarten class that we're anticipating coming, um, we have an increase of about four to five students coming into our smaller class placement. Um, and we are going to keep two students in that class the most you can have in that class is eight students. Uh, so there, there's seven to eight students in that class. Then the, the grades two to four, um, right now we're anticipating five uh, students. We expect, we're hoping, uh, to bring in other students from either other districts um, and possibly uh, shift one or two other students uh, in and out of that room. And then our middle school program where the biggest shift is going, we have a, a pretty large class for this, for a small population. Um, we have a total of eight students, which is an 811, so there are a maximum of, of eight students in that classroom. They're now moving up to the middle school. So really what we're trying to do is build a program for our students. Um, it's not just a class here, a class there. We really see several cohorts um, that are coming up through the school. So we're looking at, um, and again, you'll see it later in my presentation, adding one additional teacher who is highly trained um, in, in, special, in the special class design. So the special class programs, you're really looking at teachers who can meet the needs of students um, through applied behavior analysis, through verbal behavior, um, through all different types of assessments. So we do a lot of data taking, a lot of specialized teaching. We use the TEACH model, which is a highly structured, um, if, I'll, I'll show you just in these pictures. Um, if you see some of the classrooms, you'll see bins, and um, let me see if I see, here's a better picture. 
So you see the bins there, so they work highly, you know, the work is put into those bins, they then finish those bins and they take a break. Um, and then we try and decrease the amount of time that they take breaks. Um, so a lot of data is taken. The goal is to have them working as independently as possible. Um, so again, it, it's a very structured program. It takes a lot of training uh, for our teachers and just making sure that our teachers are really trained well in all of these methodologies in order to help our students grow and progress. Um, they also do a lot of parent training, which is required. So we take what we know um, and what uh, help parents really to understand how to work with their child at home to complete tasks at home. And this is uh, Miss Boyle, who is working with a student. Some of our students are nonverbal or have very limited language, and they use what's called a touch chat. So they speak um, with the assistance of a computer and with the pictures on the computer. And believe it or not, it really develops language. We had to have some nonverbal students who have really learned the structure of language by using these types of systems. And until you see it, you don't you don't really understand how important and how much it develops language um, because they, they learn, the, the, you know, a lot of our students are very visual learners, so they use uh, this touch chat, which helps them first identify whether they, they have a need or a want, and then it just builds on that. And they are really proficient, some of our students, and use this so quickly and so efficiently, and it's fascinating to see. And I know as uh, for some of our parents, they have really appreciated the ability to, um, you know, if their child is sick or frustrated, they're able to use this and let them know what they want or need. So again, these classrooms are highly specialized and we're not just creating a classroom, we're really creating a program and looking over many years of our students growing up uh, K-12 here in our school. So within our continuum of special education services, we also have students that require a higher level of support um, within a specialized school. So we also uh, refer to that as an added district placement. So to support our students with um, the least restrictive environment, we are continuously in conversations with our out of district partners and their families, the students' families. Um, we go continuously to visit the students within their program, not only to see if they're ready to come back to district, but also to make sure that the out of district placement is meeting the students' needs. Um, and, and like I said, there's, there's communication, not just at the annual review, that once a year meeting, but um, in constant communication with the parents and the families to make sure that the student is growing and progressing. Um, when a student is potentially ready to return to district, that's when we hold team meetings to make sure that we have the proper supports for their return. Um, and those team meetings also include the out of district and parent communication as well. Okay. So I have a five year uh, time frame here. So as you can see, my numbers really haven't changed. If anything, we've decreased in our teaching assistance over the years. Uh, next year, we're projecting 33 teaching assistants. Um, those are general education teaching assistants and special education teaching assistants. Um, we have four teaching aides throughout the district. Um, one chairperson, one, uh, we, our behavioral consultants, we still use BOCES to go through them. Our clinicians, we're still going in at um, six, six full-time people, one part-time social worker at a point four. Uh, our speech therapist is, um, we have three full-time and one uh, just under 0.5. And then the area that I'm looking at growing next year uh, by one is at that middle school program for the programs that I was talking to you about. Really going out and looking for somebody who is uh, either trained or willing to be trained in applied behavioral analysis, in the teach methodologies, in assistive technology, and using touch chats. Um, a lot of our students that are moving to the middle school come with some unique needs um, and really somebody who is able to work with their parents, their families, work with our school community, working with um, really just 
having that the, our students transition through um, the middle school years and making sure that their their needs are being met and that they're thriving. So that's the one person. Um, as you can see, though, it's still in 2018-19, 2019-20, um, we had 26.2 people. That point two was just a one period a day, um, but now we're we're asking for 25.5 people. So. We're asking for one additional middle school person who is highly trained. That's the anticipation for and next for year. And sorry, for the most part, this is all driven by numbers of students. Students. It's all driven by mandates of students, yes, by their IEP mandates. Natalie, is our, the 82121, is that our only special class self-contained no. program? Okay. No, so we have 12 to 1 to 1s um, and they're, they also function, most of our 12 to 1 to 1 classrooms um, aren't full day programs. They're, you know, for core subjects. Some students might only have two classes for ELA and social studies, and then they'll go out for the rest. Um, they might only be in there for math alone, right. and then go back out to other classrooms. Um, but this program in particular, we really have seen this the cohorts um, grow over the years. So it really is about not just growing a classroom, it's about really building a program K-12 because we see the students that are coming up uh, right through kindergarten even now. Which also saves us 60 to 80,000 of sending them out of district. E even more, it, sure. Or more, that was yeah, years for ago. Sure. Or more. Yeah. Um, and again, I think we have to normalize the conversations around our students with significant disabilities, our students, really see our see their their peers every day in school um, I think that we need to understand um, that they do come with unique needs and that they are different and it's okay and I just saw um, Miss Wayne uh, teaching a bunch of students who joined a club really who are going to work with students with some multiple disabilities and she was really just teaching them about um, the different disabilities and that it's okay to ask, it's okay to um, be curious, it's okay to not be sure. Um, and really that's also with MAGMA, you know, our program, for those of you who don't know what MAGMA is, it's a program for multiply disabled students who don't often get the opportunity, to have the opportunity to play sports or to socialize after school hours. And MAGMA, um, our high school students work with some of our multiply disabled students and really teaching them um, social skills, physical skills, um, rules, uh, just really general sports uh, skills. So, and it's also a place for, for parents to gather. So again, I think normalizing these conversations about the students and their needs uh, is, is a good thing for for our students and for their families and for our school community. So, any other questions? Just can you talk to the um, Can you talk to the high school? I didn't see any mention the high. I didn't see any mention of the high school. So we we have an existing program. It's a um, is it a twelve one one twelve one one here at the high school uh, for students who are not quite. The 811 uh, population or that need that's driven by the state mandates, um, it's sort of defined um, and it's, it's more significant needs. Um, but yes, we do have a 1211 at the high school and our students are actually really thriving. They're joining clubs. Um, they are out and about. They are uh, participating in athletics uh, in all different types of ways. So, And you anticipate the volume of assistance to remain the same at the high school? Yes. There are no changes at the high school at all okay. going into next year. And just one comment, the MAGMA program, last year watching the IB videos, the service videos, yes. and how many of those made, how many of the kids made, uh, students made videos for the MAGMA kids was great to see. So. It was great to see. And we are looking at uh, bringing MAGMA back. Um, we're, we're working on that now on how to, when and how and who. Um, so we're just putting that together for the spring. Thank and I'm looking forward to it. I think it's such a great program. Yeah. Thank you both. Thank you. Any other questions? Just, just quickly, again, the, sure. 12 to, the 12 to 1 to 1 for the academic support, that's not a 
all day location that may be only for the four core subjects or whatever there's one in each there's one k4 so it depends on the grade level sure. and the cohort so there's 12 one that's without an assistant right. then there's 15 one okay. then there's 12 one one um, again they're sort of scattered it depends on the cohort and the needs of the students in that grade mm -hmm. level but we do have the array of services k-12 so we have a 15 one and a 12 one one and a 12 one yes a 12 one yes an 8 one one mm -hmm. So really we offer, New York State, for those of you don't, that don't understand, New York State offers a continuum of services. So mm -hmm. everything from co-teaching classes, which is your general education classroom with two teachers, um, one is a special education teacher, one is a general education teacher, uh, and then the continuum of services, of special class services, and that is 1201, 811, 15 um, one. So it, we really have an array of services, and it depends on the cohort and the needs of the students at each, for each year. And theoretically, in one particular grade, you may not need Correct. one, and that, okay. Yeah, and, and oftentimes, um, we, we are creative. Um, if, if a student needs something different, um, we do have some flexibility in terms of consultant teaching services, um, resource room services, speech services, additional counseling services, things like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do want to thank Natalie and Melissa for their leadership, <laughs> for their leadership over the department and uh, definitely the teachers that support our students. I think the word is out um, that we have a, a very high quality special education program and administrators and teachers that care very much about our students. And I think part of the reason for some of these classes is the fact that families are moving into our community um, to access the outstanding educational opportunities that are provided to their students uh, and meet the needs they have. So I do wanna thank them, um, everyone involved, administration and teachers uh, for supporting these students and providing them what they need to be successful. And some of these classes that are pictured here is some of the most amazing teaching I've ever seen in my entire life. So um, again, kudos to everyone involved, thank you.